so often we find that plants and ways of gardening from the Victorian ages, Ooh, can you believe it? I know, before we were even thought of, come back into fashion and that is exactly what we're talking about. These beautiful guys which are called terrariums. The secret is the plants that you use, how to plant it and of course looking after it. If you haven't planted up a terrarium, and you're going to want to make some more. Come and have a look and we're going to take you through the steps, which is really easy. So guys, we're going to get right into this. And the first thing that you're going to need is your choice of jar. And the bigger the jar, the better. Preferably that they do have a cork on top. You'll notice the ones that we showed you just now didn't have that, but ideally you want one with a cork on top because then it forms its own little environment and ecosystem in here. So we've got our beautiful jar and I mean, it really is stunning. I could either put my hand in here or if things get a bit hectic and the plants are too big, we'll show you a really easy way to do it. So starting out, this is how we do it. You're gonna need a piece of paper that you can roll up like this to form a funnel and that's if you don't have one of these guys. But if your jar is very long, I advise that you do get this because it makes life just a whole lot simpler, okay? So what I've got here is a very fine gravel and you can pick this up from your local pet shop. Um, and I love the color differentiation because notice next to it, I've got this lovely charcoal. Charcoal fine pebble, look when you put it there. Ah, now we're talking. On its own, yeah, that looks quite nice. There, it looks hot, hot. Okay, so fine gravel, take it, and all we're gonna do is feed it in. This is our base, all right? Now your base wants to be about one and a half to one centimeters thick. Obviously, depending on the height of your jar. If you had a little short jar, then you're going to reduce that because you want it proportionate. The ideal end point of any terrarium is to have two thirds space and one third planted up. Does that make sense? Okay, glad you got it. Okay, in we go. And then you can just move it around like that. Nice. Okay. And then remember, gravity is a beautiful leveler. So just shake it around a bit, give it a bit of a bang, and it levels itself out. Okay, next step on top of this is I'm gonna be using the bigger pebble, which is this lovely tumbled black and exactly the same procedure. Okay, that should do it. Next up we're using, and don't get stuck on this point, we're using activated charcoal. Now, this guys, you also get from a, a pet shop um, and it's the same charcoal that you use in fish tanks. What the charcoal does, it stops the water from going off, from getting green, from turning yellow, from starting the rotting anaerobic process. And that's why it's important that you put the charcoal in and pop it in. Remember to move your funnel that you've got, because you've got quite a bit of depth in here that you can then move it around. And there we are, Bob's your uncle. Now, if you don't have enough space to move in your jar, then you need one of these. Watch here. Do, 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 do. Go gadget hands, go gadget. I love it. These are special little gardening tools just for terrariums. Look, you can even garden along there and along there, but aren't they new new? And what you do is you can take it and you can just move your charcoal around and you'll see when we start planting <laughs> how very effective they are. Right, next up, now that the fun is, is kind of over and I've got over using the tools, we're gonna to be adding the soil. Now the soil that we're adding is a peat-based um, mix. We've got peat in here, a bit of coconut husk, and a bit of potting soil. And that is going to form the base. And then in we go. Okay, and there we go. That should be enough. Take your little fork mm -hmm. and then you move your soil around so that you can get it nice and even. Right, once you've evened it, you then take your little trowel, make a wee little hole 
and we're ready to pop our first plant in. So your selection, you need to rummage around, see what you can play with, but what I've got here are plants that do incredibly well. What I've got here is one of the firm favorites of not being able to kill. That's right, now I've got your attention. So this is called a hen and chick. Um, it's a really simple, simple plant to, to grow. It's called chlorophytum and same, look, oh, look how new it is, Tom Thumb. And squeeze, squeeze, out comes the little guy. Oh, look at those beautiful roots. What we do now is because we're getting it into that little, little hole there, we tease some of the excess soil off and we take it. Now watch carefully here. This is where things get really creative. Take the plant and if you can't get your hand in, all you do is drop it. Boom. In it goes. Okay. And you use your two tools, hold the plant up with one and then feed it round, firm the plant down. Right, our first little guy's in. Let's make the little indent for the next one. And what I'm going to do is use this little plant here. It's called Cryptanthus. They are beautiful. They remember the bromeliad family and they grow in for their foliage. They do get flowers, but very insignificant. Little flowers in here. They grow easily, they make lots of babies, um, and then you can just simply take them and make more. Okay, same drill. Tease away some of the excess soil. And let's get this little baby in here. Drop it in. And then do the surgery. Remember when you're planting up, you're wanting to follow a very similar principle to like we do potting recipes. Something with a bit of height, something low, and then something in the middle. So we've got the very low texture here, we've got a bit of height, and then I'm going to use one of these hypoestes. And let's take this baby. It's also known as the polka dot plant, this. Um, very easy to grow. It's a great ground cover in shaded areas, but also likewise for terrariums. Man, it's a winner. All right, that little baby is in, and I've got three plants in here, which I think is more than enough. Remember, they will still need space to grow, so I don't like shove them all inside there. But now I've got the sphagnum moss, which is gonna act as a mulch. Okay, so same thing, in it goes. <laughs> oh, doesn't that look gorgeous? Look, 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 look. Now the most important part is how do we care for this and make sure that this little terrarium is going to live happily ever after. It's all in the watering, folks, and your first water is critical. As you're watering, do you see that? It's running down, do you see there? It's running down the inside. Because then it runs down the inside, gets into our layers, and then the plants can get their roots in there and start drawing it up. Okay, and you can just turn your pot as you're going and make sure that you're right onto the lip. There we go. Once you've done that, you're going to put it into the spot where you want it. What spot do you put it in? Well lit, lots of light, no direct sunlight, please. So for the first week, you're going to put your cork like that. Very important, because you're going to allow any condensation that was in here, going to let it escape. Once there is no longer condensation on the sides, you can then take it and close it up. 